Firstly, I come down here and I get a feeling of sort of inner peace. Mm -hmm. These birds are they're quite special. Mm. They do have human type behaviours which, which we can link into yeah. and see ourselves in, in, in some of the antics which they get up to. They're very endearing. They are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even when they're being crabby. <laughs> Yeah, these are definitely some of the most charming personalities that I've ever worked with. And we kind of laugh because um, emperors get a lot of, you know, media play and they're pretty regal. And, but they're boring. When they show up here, they kind of stand around and, and our little Adelis are kind of busy, busy, busy doing their thing. And it's pretty funny. Very distinct personality types. I'm a population demographer, so I'm interested in, in vital rates, things like survival rates and age at first breeding and that kind of thing. We can track whether they're breeding or not, whether they're paired, how many chicks th they raise, um, and that provides us a, a large database to, to try to understand how and why populations are changing. These birds are looking very, very settled. Yeah, they do. Um, nice and fat. They're very settled on their nest. Yep. Uh, Already yep. got eggs and progressing to chicks. Yep. And they don't look so. too cranky either. No, they don't, which is nice for yeah. us. This is amazing. You guys have, I think it's a 50 year data set right. of population numbers for Cape Bird, which is just, it's like the longest time series population data anywhere in the Antarctic. So you can tease out, is this an actual trend? Right. Which is happening. How many penguins do you reckon you got there now? 40,000 pairs, so... 40,000 pairs? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot of penguins. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, that would be nice. I'm going to go to that. The delis do not like solid ice, uh, and they do not like complete open water. They have to have that broken sea ice. They need the water to, to be able to, to, to feed, um, so they need the broken ice to access that water, to access their food. Okay. The P Antarctic Peninsula is a perfect example of a place where sea ice has disappeared and so have a deli penguin population. They really need the sea ice to do well. If Southern Ross Sea goes the way of the Antarctic Peninsula and we lose the sea ice that we get now, um, we will lose Adelie penguins, yep. just like they have. Um, if we can get a handle on climate change and that doesn't happen here, then um, we should be in pretty good shape. But I'm concerned. I think that we're beginning to see things like some of the glaciers here. Um, the Bird Glacier down at the end seems like maybe it's receded a bit. Um, the glacier on Beaufort Island has, has receded up the hill some. Whether that's just part of some natural annual variation or you know a bigger symptom of climate change, um, we'll just have to see, I think. I try to be optimistic. Yes. Well, well when you're here with the birds, it's easier. These places are important. I think 
for people that don't get the opportunity to come here, that aren't as lucky as, as Brian and I, to be here and see these animals doing their thing in this beautiful place, and when they have to think about feeding their kids and, and whether climate change is real, they'll also think about what a loss it would be for, for this not to be here anymore. And more importantly, if we lose Antarctica, we will probably seriously be in the process of losing ourselves because I think this, this would be very dire circumstances if we get to the point that things are really seriously changing here. So. These animals down here also have, have a right to be here. We've got to share, share the planet with creatures like this. We've got to learn to share the planet.